was almost 12 years old when I made the active decision to participate in theatre. That is outside of the school nativity. I made that decision because of a line on a report card. Shannon is a storyteller. She's quite the drama queen and she's very elaborate. We all know what that really means is she never shuts up. <laughs> but it was all the encouragement that I needed. I spoke to a friend who participated in youth theatre outside of school and I was told, well, it's really expensive and you need to be able to act, dance and sing. Can you do all three? And I said, no. I was 14 years old when I made the decision to take GCSE drama. Something that was met with the comment, are you sure? It seems like such a waste for a high achieving student. I was 18 years old when I finally decided I didn't care anymore whether it was a waste or a good idea for me to participate in theatre and pursue it as a career, because I cared about it and that was all that mattered. I'd love to be able to tell you that I didn't give up, but I did many times. The only reason that it didn't stick was because I had people supporting me who had my best interests at heart and not just what looked best on paper. But not all young people have this, and that's why I decided to become a youth theatre director or a drama teacher. The first performance that I participated in was a 12-week long process that taught the basic drama skills. It ended in this rather strange performance that was about the spirits of the sea, and it involved this letter that we could just never remember to bring on the stage at the right time. That 12-week process is, is really important in theatre. The way we progress through creating a performance and building this network of people all bringing a new skill set to the table is why drama is so important in education. I still use that process in my classroom today to try and bring as many transferable skills into the classroom as possible. I'm going to lean on that process a little bit during my talk today, and we're going to start with weeks one to three. Content, context, and research. Now, the very first question that I ask my students at the start of every single project is, what do you want out of this project? And I hope that the answer is anything other than to get out of this project. <laughs> but whatever the answer is, I listen and I take it on board. Next, I present them with the content. So this might be a devised performance entirely from their own ideas, or I might present them with a script that's a reflection of their interests at the time. But whatever I choose, the transferable skills of collaboration, good leadership and teamwork are not only taught but modelled from the very beginning by including them in that decision-making process. We then move on to the content itself. We start to explore the context of this, both historical context, social issues, and the themes of the text. Now, these are all really important transferable skills in and of themselves, but what I think is the most important transferable skill during this initial time period is wider cultural understanding. Now, the students I've taught in the past come from areas that are either rural, really low income, or of, of one single demographic. This doesn't really allow a lot of exposure to different perspectives, cultures, and beliefs. But theatre is a really fantastic way to increase that. Recently, my students participated in a project where they got to involve a secondary culture in the performance. Whatever culture they selected, a large portion of the show would be set there, and there'd be references to the belief system and ceremonies made throughout. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, as a teacher, the idea of this terrified me. I was concerned about my students being able to explore cultures respectfully, and I wanted to make sure any student sharing their experience in my classroom felt safe to do so. But I didn't need to worry. They didn't give me a reason to. They handled the topic with the most utmost respect. They eventually, after exploring a few different cultures, settled on the heritage of one of the members of the group. This member got to share some of her family traditions and even teach some of the rest of the group some of her family's native language. And the rest of the group got to ask questions and be curious without feeling judged, which is something that they shared they hadn't really felt outside of that context. 
This wider understanding is something that those students can take to them to any diverse workplace, and it will help them to be just a little bit more compassionate and respectful when talking and communicating with others that differ from them. This leads us on to weeks four to six, design and organization. This is the part that I like to call the heavy lifting. It's everything from set building to costume making to graphic design. Now, a lot of teachers ask their students to take on these additional roles. But often we also require it because there's no outsourcing when you have such limited resources. This is a really wonderful thing, though. I've had students who've designed logos and programs and tickets for a performance and go on to have a career in graphic design, designing logos and marketing materials for companies all around the world. I've had students take an interest in handling the budget and organization of the show and then utilize those skills in careers in accounting and finance. I myself found myself in a few theater productions where the costume department was pretty short-handed. And despite never having picked up a needle and thread before my time in theater, I learned that skill set so I could fill the gap. It's a skill set that helped me pay my way through university and pay my bills and rent. And it's a skill set I still use today as a teacher and as a person. During this time period of four to six weeks, we also experiment with learning and developing problem-solving skills alongside our core skills. And this might be an individual problem that a group has to solve, but some problems need the full group involvement. Recently, a problem that a group I was working with got to solve was, how do we fit enough recycling to fill the stage of a 1,000-seat theatre into the back of a Fiat Panda? And yes, they managed it. But the important thing is, is during this four to six week period, we really lean on those other industries because we can't do what we do without them. And the students get to develop those core skills and explore different options for a future career path outside of theatre. We're going to move on to week seven to nine. So this is the stage that I think people think about the most when they think about theatre. So it's rehearsal and play. So. This is where we kind of explore different scenes. We look at different ways of doing them. We think about vocal technique, spatial awareness, and physicality of the role. These are all things that we naturally develop as skills when we're children through play and make-believe. But we stop doing this as adults. It doesn't really make sense why, because play is one of the best tools for learning. Peter Gray, previous TEDx Never Sync speaker and psychology professor, spoke on this in his talk, The Decline of Play. He said, play from a biological evolutionary standpoint is nature's means of ensuring that young human beings acquire the skills they need to attain development into successful adults. But we don't stop developing and learning when we become adults. And it's important we keep play in our toolbox as a method of learning. The best place to relearn this is in theater, but it doesn't come naturally to everybody. Relearning play can make you feel quite vulnerable and it can be really challenging at times. So at this point in this part of the process, we really lean on the leaders of the group to take initiative and guide people who are struggling through this part of the process. We try to create a safe space where it's not only acceptable, it's encouraged to make mistakes because you learn just as much from the things that go wrong as the things that go right. And from here, we lead on to weeks 10 to 12, which is our recap and our performance. So at this stage, we've done a lot of the work. We're in the final stretch. Something I like to tell my students to really take on board is that the show at the end is the least important part. It's the reward. The process is where you learn the most. And there's still plenty of learning to be done in the last 10 to 12 weeks. This is where we have our technical rehearsal and our costume rehearsal. They really start to see everything coming together as a whole. They start to lose a little confidence at this point. And to the point where, as directors, we even have the saying, a terrible technical rehearsal usually means a pretty good show. But we spend this time really rebuilding that confidence and reminding them of the skills that they've developed. They're ready to overcome any obstacles that come their way. And those obstacles, they're going to come. <laughs> So flashing back a bit to the first performance I participated in, we never did remember to take that letter on stage. 
it completely changed the plot of the second half of the play. But if you've watched the play, you could argue that it was for the better. But the point is, as long as they've bonded as a team, they've worked hard, there is something to be proud of at the end regardless, which leads me to what I think is the most transferable skill from theatre. Pride in your work and feeling accomplished. You can achieve great things with those feelings. You've gone through the whole process from weeks one to 12, and you've done it. Nobody's done it for you. You've overcome those obstacles because you've been a part of every single step. That feeling is really incredible. And I was riding the back of that feeling myself when I was 18 years old. I was performing at Edinburgh Fringe Festival. You can see me somewhere at the back. <laughs> it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I'd had a really rough couple of years. During my A-levels, I'd had to take quite a lot of time out of college because my mum had fallen unwell. And both my university college lecturers at the time and myself, we were pretty convinced that I wasn't going to pass that exam. I sat there at the festival with the website open on exam results day, and I passed. And I was really happy that I did, because it, the confidence in that moment that I felt from the performance and my capabilities meant that I got to make a really impulsive decision, but a brilliant one. With my youth theatre director of seven years beside me and my mum on the phone, I applied for university through clearing, and it was the best thing I ever did. So I've talked a lot about the transferable skills, but where can you transfer them to? That's important too, right? Shakespeare's Globe Theatre and awarding body Pearson developed a series of videos recently called The Importance of Drama. In these videos, they invited people in from different industries in economics, tech, and healthcare to talk about the transferable skills that drama provides. The common consensus between all of these different people was that those who study drama aren't necessarily going to go into a career in theatre. But if you utilise those skills, it will be worthwhile because you can utilise them in any different career. So it's only a waste if you choose to waste it. Top of the list of job listings at the moment in tech is creative problem solvers. And over in healthcare for nursing, it's excellent communicators to the point where people in my industry make entire careers out of teaching those communication skills to adults entering the industry. But those who made drama a part of their study when they were younger have those skills going in. Don't get me wrong, I would love it, and I do love it, when my students come to me and say, Shannon, I want to be a performer, I want to be a drama teacher. Not because it's the subject I've taught them, but because they're passionate about it. But I try to have the same energy when my students come to me and they say, Shannon, I've decided I want to go into tech, I want to go into science, I want to go into politics. The only appropriate response here, in my opinion, is that's awesome. Let's see what we can do with your time here to get you closer to that goal. I hope that anybody listening to this today who is in a position to inspire or influence a young person's life just takes this on board a little bit and thinks about how we can change our language around the topic of drama. Because we need to stop and think a little bit before we dismiss so-called soft skills like drama because there's absolutely nothing soft about making yourself a more diverse and well-rounded individual. Thank you.